Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is showing you how to make a pillow cover that you do not need to sew. You do not use hot glue. You can remove it and wash it and change it out for different seasons. It is so simple and easy to make. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like the project you see in today's video, remember to give it a thumbs up, but let's get started. I have been making pillow covers for years and I'm so excited to show these to you. Now there is one key component that you need to know is this unique stitch right here. This stuff is literally, it says on the front of it, sewing in a tube and they are not kidding. This is the key to making these pillow covers. I have tried the vast majority of different fabric glues to see if I could find anything else that worked quite as well as this particular glue and I have had no success. This stuff, you can wash it and dry it and your pillows will last for years. Now I will try and leave a link in my description box to this on Amazon if there is one. I find mine at Hobby Lobby or at Joann's. You can still use a coupon at Joann's to get it. It's about $6.99 and then your coupon on top of that. So just keep that in mind. Um, Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure if this really goes on sale with any of the sewing stuff uh, anymore. You used to be able to do a coupon on it. So I haven't bought it since Hobby Lobby's, from Hobby Lobby since they've changed their coupon rules. So I just want to put that out there too. Now this stuff is awesome because when you screw off the lid, it is right ready to go. You don't have to cut anything off like a lot of the different fabric glues out there. So it really is just ready to go. And I will leave all of the measurements to this uh, pillow cover down in my description box. But the best recipe that I can tell you is that if you're using say an 18 by 18 pillow, I'm going to cut my front panel 18 by 18. So the exact same measurement as the pillow. And then my back envelope panels, I will cut at 13 by 18 and you need two of those because you want them to overlap on the back. Now anywhere you would stitch with a sewing machine is exactly where you're going to put this glue. So I'm just going to do a little seam of glue here. We'll just call it a seam just because it sounds like we're doing something fun with sewing. I don't know. But anyway, you just do a seam of glue right along the edge here and I'm going to fold this flap over because this is going to be exposed when we do our envelope and I do not want any raw edges showing. And so because you know it'll fray and all sorts of different things. So it's just easier to just do a little bit of glue there and fold this over so it is a nice little hem there. Now I like to uh, flatten mine out and kind of spread it between the pieces of fabric here with something flat. I'm just using my ruler. You can see that the glue kind of will come out a little bit there. So just have a, a wipe handy when you do this. It makes it a little bit easier and the glue is not super sticky but I mean it is like getting a little bit of glue on your hand so you will want to kind of wipe your fingers from time to time. And when I flipped it over, I just went over it again with the ruler. This is probably a little bit of overkill, but I just wanted to make sure that that was very well closed. Now I'm just showing you a different technique you can do with the glue. I think this way probably wastes a lot more glue, but sometimes it's just a little bit easier just to kind of squeeze it out like that. It's kind of fun too. So I'm just showing you, this is such a forgiving process here. This glue is very forgiving. And that is one reason, one of the many reasons I like it better than hot glue is because I feel like, you know, if I got to this point right here, here and went oh I needed to fold it over more or my fabric was like folded over or crimped or something like I all I would have to do is just peel that up like lift it up the glue's not dry it just has a very you know good hold at this point but I mean you'd still be able to uh, pull it up and fold it down a different way or fix your fold or anything like that we're hot glue you're kind of you don't really get that much flexibility so now I'm just showing you the two envelope pieces laid with right sides touching. So that just means that the patterns go on the inside. So you're making this inside out and I'm just laying them down on my front panel piece here. So that big piece right there is my 18 by 18, which is gonna be the front of the pillow. And so I need to put my first envelope piece onto this. So I just run some of the glue along the bottom of this. And then I will just take one of those envelope pieces and lay my raw edge, so not the edge that we made the hem on and I will just place that down and I will just go ahead and kind of flatten that out with my glue. Now I forgot to mention but I do like doing the hem on both pieces of the envelope because even though one of them is going to be completely um, like down in and not exposed you're not going to see it at all it's completely hidden when you're pulling and I know this from experience when you're pulling in and out pillows you're changing them out or when you wash them your fabric is going to fray and it's going to make a mess. So definitely make sure you don't skip that step of hemming both of those down. So now I have this envelope piece on, 
I'm just going to fold it back. Now, again, that glue is going to hold, so you don't wanna to pull tough on it because that glue is still wet where we just affix it to the base of the panel. But I mean, it's gonna be enough that you can still gently pull it back and do this. So I just put a piece of glue along the side there and I'm just going to spread that out. And then I do the same thing to the other side as well and spread that out. You can kind of see I just use my wipe to clean up any mess that it might've made there. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. So you're just gluing the, uh, on this one, it's going to be like what's along the top there and then the two sides. So you'll be leaving that portion where we made the hem completely open and that's how you'll get your pillow in and out of it. So since this is repeating what you just watched, I am just going to speed this up a little bit, but just still show you so that way you can get the full process of making the pillow, but it is the same process that I just did. I have used several different types of fabric when I have made these pillows. This particular fabric is just a canvas. Um, it's just kind of like in the home furnishing decorating section there. Um, I got this particular one at Joann's, but I mean, they sell it at any type of fabric store. I've also done flannel before. I've made pillowcases for my kids this way, um, and they've held up through many, many washes and been totally fine. Um, really any kind of fabric, the thicker the fabric, the more glue you will need though. So just keep that in mind. So now I have that second envelope panel put onto the back here. I will just spread it out with my ruler. And now I'm just going to let this sit overnight to dry. Hey guys, it's me, Emily. I wanna take just a minute to tell you about something really exciting. I have partnered with Skillshare and want to tell you about them. First of all, it is because of amazing sponsors like Skillshare that I am able to keep bringing you DIY inspiration. So what is Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people just like you and me who come together and find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. With Skillshare, you get access to thousands of inspiring classes which are taught by industry leaders and working professionals. I have always loved learning new ways to create, but with being a mom and having a busy schedule, taking in-person classes just has not been an option. With Skillshare, you get to work at your own pace and watch classes on your own time, even in your pajamas if you want. This opened up a whole new world for me and I am able to continue to learn and create on my own schedule. I feel like it is so important to keep learning and growing and creating and Skillshare gives me that opportunity and they want to do the same for you. What sort of classes are available? Well, there are too many to list, but just to highlight a few, you can take classes in woodworking, photography, watercolor, interior decorating and design, organization or self-care, just to name a few. As you guys know, I love to use the program Canva to do a lot of designing for different things in my YouTube channel. And on Skillshare, there is a class that is called Social Media Content Creation in Canva from Beginner to Advanced. And it is taught by Maggie Stara. And it was phenomenal, the different things that I've learned. It goes over all the basics, all the way to advanced stuff. Things like the psychology of colors, finding different fonts that work together, do's and don'ts, uh, your Canva workflow, Instagram stories, all sorts of things that you would be able to do in the Canva program. One of the things I love about Skillshare is how they divide their classes into several different lessons. So you really can just take a lesson here and there throughout the day or maybe before you go to bed or wake up in the morning. It's very manageable. Skillshare has partnered up with me to bring you an amazing offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box or my code FarmCharmChic will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Click that link in my description box or use my code FarmCharmChic for your free month of Skillshare. Let's get back to the DIYs. So now this has set overnight. It's time, the glue is completely dry and you can read the, glue, the times on the back of the glue package of how long you can kind of see I'm pulling it there and it's not coming apart. I usually just leave mine overnight and that seems to be enough time for it to completely dry. So now I'm just flipping this right side out. And when I get to the corners, I just grab something. I'm just using like the end of like an unused paintbrush or something like that. You just want to make sure that you pop those corners out. So that way you don't have any like tucked in corners or anything like that it doesn't look very flattering on the pillow so you can kind of see it's taking shape here it's actually looking like it's going to be a pillow it's 
I'm loving how it turned out. I'm actually doing my porch in a bee theme, so I'm making these to go outside on my porch. And just so you know, if you are making these to go outdoors, the fabric will fade, so you'll maybe get one season, maybe two seasons out of them. And by that, I mean like I might be able to pull these out next summer and use them again, but usually after two seasons, the, the colors have faded from sunlight and everything. So just keep that in mind as well also. So now I am just taking, this is an Ikea 18 by 18. It's the feather down pillow, and I am just going to smush it in. I if you've done it correctly you should not have a seam rip on you but you should still just be careful as always whatever kind of pillow cover you're using when you're putting your your pillow in just smush it down and then kind of pull you can see I'm pulling the edge over and then I'll pull the pillow up into that other section whenever I am putting a pillow insert in I always just reach my hand in there find the corner and then I pull it up into the corner of the sham or whatever you're putting it into so and then I'll just kind of hold that and pull so that way the corners do match in it makes your pillow look more full and everything now the reason that I do like if this is an 18 by 18 pillow and I do my cover at 18 inches you can make your cover I mean make whatever adjustments to whatever size your pillow is but I like my pillow to be really full I like it to have um a, be a little bit kind of not necessarily tight on it but enough that you can do like the little karate chop it's not going to look saggy or anything like that you can see how that envelope is on the back that's going to be the back portion of the pillow so you're not going to see that but it is held and here I'm just showing you that I was trying to pull it and that I mean it is like really strong so you are totally good to go and you know if these start to get dirty or in a few weeks I'm like I really want to wash them I'll just take them off and throw them in my washer and I will dry them which I would not dare do with hot glue so this is just your traditional like quilting fabric right here it's very thin uh, again I like to do mine with a little bit of a thicker fabric but it will work just fine with this so I'm just putting this into very fast motion just kind of showing you it is the exact same process uh, sometimes the glue will you'll kind of see a little bit of it through the edge but since the only edge that you'll see on the pillow is the back part of the envelope it's totally okay but again and I also wanted to show you this because if you're just doing this your first time, I feel like a pattern with a plaid like this, like these are one inch squares, and I feel like it's very easy to do measurement wise. You can kind of get your seam allowance really good there. So if you're wanting to be really simple when you start out, get something like a checked pattern like this or something. So you've got the straight lines to follow and it's just really quick and easy for measurement. I love making these pillow covers for all different seasons. I have them for 4th of July, Easter. You can even do like plain colored fabrics and do a transfer on them to make them more personalized. Uh, do the printing on fabric, anything like that to make them super personalized. And they're so easy. Once you make your first one, you're going to go, oh my gosh. I mean, the whole world of possibilities opens up for different types of fabrics for different types of pillows. But you can see how easy this particular one just slides right in there the same way as the other and it is super simple and I mean this fabric really does look good I just like the durability of the thicker fabric I feel like I can get a little bit more use out of it but you can see how great this fabric looks I'm curious to know what your thoughts are if you guys like these pillows if you're like this if you like this video and want to see more different tips on things like this let me know but I love this pillow hack Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you love this little pillow cover hack that I've showed you on how easy these are to make. I would love to know if you are going to give this a try or if it is something you would try. It is so much fun and I love having different pillows to decorate for different times of the year. And since they are pillow covers, they're so easy to remove, easy to wash and then store. So you have them to use from year to year. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I would be excited to know what classes you are taking at Skillshare because I am always looking for different ones to take. As always, you guys, I want to remind you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.